Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And after several requests, it's time for a boat tour. So the Old Crow is a low roughneck 2070 VPT John boat. The 2070 is for her 20 foot length and the 70 inch beam at the floor. The top of the gunnels are 92 inches across, so there's plenty of room to dance. I also applied a latex bed liner to the deck and it's held up a lot better than the paint. If you've been following the channel, you know the heart of the rig is a 2018 Merck 90 horsepower four stroke. I had the chance to run the motor on a few occasions and I can't believe how smooth it is. The boat's also a little quicker now with a top speed of about 40 miles an hour. A couple more things to point out on the stern is the boat ladder that makes re-entry a heck of a lot easier and the two Scotty power lock rod holders. They're secured with stainless bolts and a large aluminum plate. I also included a stainless eye bolt for attaching a lanyard if you feel the need. I know, some guys aren't fans of plastic. Jeez. But if you're cranking down the drag, something's going to give. The hull of the boat only has a 12 degree dead rise, so it can get a little rough in a chop. The benefit is that it runs shallow, which makes it a great option for my home waters, which can get a little hazardous because of the fluctuating water levels and rocks. That's also why I run a piranha prop. All right, guys, up in the bow here, we've got a 75 pounds of thrust motor guide wireless trolling motor. I really like the option of not having that great big cord on the deck, but I'll be honest, I had to replace the transmission already in this unit and unfortunately I would not recommend it. Something that is pretty handy though is the retractable 40 feet of cord here or rope I should say that we have. This is a nice little touch and you can pick this up I think from the big sporting goods stores as well. Nice and handy. I do not use this as my anchor line though. It's simply not enough but it's good for the odd little tying off when you're on shore. So. On the deck, we have a couple storage compartments. The first one, and there's not a lot of room in there, we just use for a little bit of uh, wet storage. It's not waterproof whatsoever. A little bit of tools in there and some documents, anchor cord, bailing bucket. And of course, our second one is our live well. Again, that's wet storage. Um, I don't really keep too many fish at all, maybe the odd striper and maybe the odd landlocked salmon, but that does come in handy when you got to keep those alive for a little while. And of course we do have a seat base there for a pedestal seat as well. Moving back, you can see that we do have a Plano dry storage box. Got lots of little binoculars in there and uh, spare sets of gloves, all kinds of little tools. Kind of keeps everything nice and dry. Got a couple pole holders there for the GoPro tools. And this year we've got a, a melt crate that we did up for an anchor box. And you can never have enough rod holders. So we put a couple of rod, more rod holders, I should say, onto that. And we had a, an old ABS pipe that we riveted onto the deck. Kind of use that mostly for our uh, big musky net. Now for the side console course more rod holders picked those up from Cabela's a few years ago and they've held up very well and I kind of built myself a little plastic tool rack as well right tool for the right job and that includes jaw spreaders needle nose pliers um, hook cutters those are nipex those are an awesome cutter and of course grippers there to keep your hands away from those nasty teeth of pickerel or of course uh, musky and of course you always have to have a uh, hand rag. From the captain's chair you can see that the console is pretty bare and that's the way we like it. Got a fuel gauge along with an aerator and bilge and navigation lights, an extra compass and of course that's my uh, rod holder there, another Scotty power lock. Of course I had to get the extension here, I don't know if that's either four or six inches, to make sure that I could accommodate the um, long handles on the musky and striper rods. I found that if I didn't have that, they were interfering actually with the steering wheel. A very important component of any boat is the electronics. I picked up this Hummingbird Helix 10 a couple years ago now and I cannot imagine operating without it. It's a very user-friendly system and I would highly recommend it to anyone. 
Another modification we made to the boat was this wind deflector. It's a quarter inch aluminum and we trimmed it off with fuel line hose. We didn't want any sharp edges on it for anybody to grab onto. And the reason why we made that so rugged was, unfortunately, when people jumped into the boat and it was a little bit rocky, the first thing they grabbed for was a, or was the windshield. And I wanted to make sure that we made it nice and secure. So that's what we did and it's held up very well. And of course, we have a little uh, tool rack or a lure rack in the back here as well. And lo and behold, rusty hooks. So I'm sure Fred Bowen knows what I'm talking about when I use those for weed guards and he actually sent me down another weed guard that I'm going to try out this year. So Fred, you might uh, have me converted and I might get rid of these eventually. So Now on the passenger side we have another pedestal seat and that is another modification that we made. What we did was lift the floor up and put one inch square tubing along with a quarter inch aluminum plate underneath and then bolted it on. Those things have been rock solid and they haven't moved in 10 years. So that was a great addition. And on the passenger side, we have another Scotty Power Lock rod holder. Here on the St. John River, it's tidal waters and you can run up to five rods. So you'll often see me running at least three and sometimes four, so they get well used. Now, just in front of the back deck, I've got an oar, just in case all else fails, and a couple DC outlets. I use those for running a radio and also for the seat warmers, which come in real handy in December when it's minus 10 degrees. So that's it for the tour. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the water.